moving on with uh, Derek Haney, who is the chief e-commerce technologist. Hi. Hi, Hello. Derek. Can you hear me all right? I'm on a different device today. <laughs> yes, loud and clear. Perfect. <clears throat> okay, Derek is the host of the Future of E-Commerce podcast, and he's the chief e-commerce technologist at ecommercetech.io, and a lot of people might not know this, but this is where e-commerce stores go to research, discover, and buy the right tools to grow their store. So half of your day, I understand, is spent on reviewing tools, and the other half talking to e-shops and how you can help them improve um their stuff right yeah exactly it's exhausting uh i do the sales demos that uh nobody really wants to do but uh you know what? i find some value in there <laughs> okay so you're going to talk to us today about how real-time live chat boost revenues by 13 percent. now that's an odd figure 13 but i'm going to let you explain all that to us right away so the floor is yours Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. And yeah, I didn't choose the revenue number. It was just the calculation that we were able to make. Also, I see that my face is changing colors for you. I'm sorry. I can't fix that right now. So just deal with, uh, with, with I think it's because of my background lighting is changing. My face is changing some colors here, but no big deal. Uh, th this is a perfect uh, talk to follow up what Els was talking about, about communication with your customer. So I'm really excited to talk to you about live chat today. By the end of this session, you should be convinced that live chat is an integral part of e-commerce. Now, it's not for everyone. So before I even get into it, let me tell you who this is perfect for. If you're making over about $25,000 a month, if your average order value is over $40, and even if it's a little bit lower than that, it can still work. And if you care about your customers, which you would be watching the previous session, then you're perfect for being here right now. And I'm going to explain how to use live chat and how it can really work, as well as what not to do uh, when, when it comes to using live chat and how it can totally backfire and decrease your conversion rate. All right, so about me, my past, all you need to know really uh, is that I've been in e-commerce, I've been an agency owner, I've been in e-commerce technology, and I am currently focused completely on connecting e-commerce teams with e-commerce tech providers. I'll give you a link at the end if you wanna just talk to me. I literally consult with merchants for free to, under to analyze and understand their technology stack and give suggestions and opportunities for the future. So I'd love to connect later. We'll get to that at the end. Start with the big question. What is the ROI of your customer service team, right? This is usually considered our cost center. You're usually deducting this as a line item similar to cost of goods sold. Unfortunately, it, it's a very short-sighted view. And the way that uh, cu the, the customer service has changed, especially in e-commerce over the last years, is uh, is absolutely um, flipping this on its head to, to really make you think about how to invest in customer service and what I call the emergence of the sales department within your organization so that you can, uh, you can see the ROI coming from those chat conversations and you can figure out who's your top performing agents and how to better uh, increase conversion rate, like what's working in uh, answering questions in order to get customers to purchase. There's two types of customer service interactions, pre-sales and post-sales. I'm not a customer service guy, actually. Uh, I don't know all about the post-service, uh, post-sales uh, business process optimization process and managing agents. I've never done all of that, but I do know e-commerce sales and conversion rate optimization. So today we're only talking about the pre-sales side of customer service. And, and, and again, I'm going to show you really how to how to make this a thing and separate out your tickets so that you can focus on pre-sales and invest more in pre-sales. Pre-sales is specifically about overcoming objections. And I, Els was like, like I said, a perfect person to follow up on because we're talking about things now, now that was there was some post purchase things about how to make the customer experience great. But now we're in that pre sales experience where it's like, how do I make sure that they know this is going to fit them? How do I make sure that they know this is going to match the color, you know, that they have? What if they need this by Friday, and they don't know if it's going to come by Friday, they're going to ask questions, right? They're going to go to chat, or they're going to go to some sort of email. Um, you know, they're going to email you, they're going to ask these questions. These are the big five, uh, or really the big four of objections, which is pricing, sizing, stock, and shipping. They want to know if it costs money. Uh, sometimes it's international shipping, taxes and duties and things like that. So here's what this looks like in a Facebook chat. When a video is going viral, people are tagging their friends. They're saying, need, we need this, we want this. 
What do you see here in front of you? And this is a screenshot from my partners at Gorgeous. They helped me compile the data. By the way, this is based on uh, a survey. We've done a survey of over 500 um, of the top e-commerce brands to understand how live chat is impacting business. So we have real data and real results here for you. So all, this is people commenting, need, want. What, what do you notice here? The brand isn't responding. So you've got customers lined up uh, outside your door, right? This is literally a viral. This is the comments of a viral video about a really cool product. And they're lined up outside your door. And you're like, ah, I'm not even going to let them in. You know, you could just stay out there. I hope they figure out how to get inside, right? You're not leading them to you. So by having a chat conversation in here or tagging, uh, let's see, we could tag Christine and say, hey, Christine, uh, I'm so glad you want this. Here's a coupon called Christine 10 for 10% off your purchase. Really looking forward to, you know, helping you out with your eyes, with your shoes, whatever the product is in that case, right? So there's a clear opportunity to increase our, our conversion rate, to increase our revenue by having chat conversations here. And most importantly, having those chat conversations in real time. So within a uh, sub 90 second response time, which I'll show you more about in a second. Here's what live chat looks like on the site. Noble is doing it wrong and you don't want to do this what you see here is name email message optional message optional if the message is optional then we're really not trying to start a conversation all we're doing is collecting your email and this is no better than a pop-up tool uh the problem is is that if you go to chat with somebody and all you get is a pop-up you feel as if you're, you're you're being lied to and you're expecting to get communication in real time and instead you're getting sent to an email list or uh, you're gonna get a response email in you know one to three business days, which is totally gonna kill the vibe on completing a sale today, especially for any product that has any sort of urgency built into it. And you can imagine Facebook advertisers, if you're if you're if you're running your, your e-commerce store and your your advertising team is working so hard on providing urgency in that messaging and that viral video that somebody's just like, oh my God, I need this. This is so perfect for me. And then they get to the website. They fill in this uh, chat form and then they like go on their merry way. And two days later, they get a response like, eh, that was yesterday's news, right? So you can immediately, I think, in your mind, uh, abstract on how this is really going to impact your conversion rate and why it's so important because it aligns with the other goals in your business. Here's another uh, chat that's a little bit better, but still email gated. What I like about it is that you've got some um, you've got some options here. And this is absolutely kind of the next stage of live chat, which is called uh, bot to human interaction. You want the bot to answer or pre answer as many questions as you can before letting the human interact. But you have to have both. Don't think that it's going to magically uh, be all bot. And I know we were just kind of talking about chat bots as an opportunity and all that stuff. The human is there to respond. Also, the human can engage on top of the bot so that we can uh, so that we can ask additional questions, continue the engagement and then drive revenue. All right. Here's an easy one. This is really solid as far as how we're starting, not email gated, which is what I love to see. And it's just two questions. Help with sizing questions with order. So obviously question with order is a post sale question. But if they click help with sizing, you better believe they want to buy. Right. This is a strong buyer opportunity, or if they type a question, there is a way for a macro response to come in and, uh, and automatically respond to them if you don't have an agent follow up with them immediately. So what is the impact that I'm telling you can happen from live chat? Let's add it all up. 13% to 60% increase in your average order value. So this isn't even increasing the conversion rate yet. The size of the card is growing because a live chat representative can show people around the site, can suggest more products to them, can see into their cart if they're doing it right, right? You can, you can see the cart, you can see the page they're on, and you can see uh, what pages they viewed. And then you can make recommendations. You can even ask them to send a screenshot of their face or their body profile. Things like that are now becoming quite common. So you become this personal shopper. And let me just pause there and, and talk about this as an in-store experience. If you walk, you know, we mentioned Sephora earlier, if you, if, if you, or else did, uh, if you walk into Sephora, if you walk into a beauty shop, uh, there's often a floor rep trying to help you with your purchase. They're walking you around. They're showing you products. There's even inside, you know, Macy's and Bloomingdale's, these, uh, th these experts that will do your makeup for you. They're not doing your makeup for free even though they are doing your makeup for free, they're doing your makeup because it increases their in-store conversion rate, right? They're gonna get more sales and they're gonna increase the average order value by being there for you. 
what's going on right now in e-commerce is that uh, is that you're leaving them to their own devices. It's like, go into my store. I'm not here. You just figure it out. It's almost, it's the exact opposite of what you would expect from a, from a retail experience. And sadly, we haven't had many retail experiences lately, but, uh, I, but we can expect that if you can make online more like those uh, well orchestrated retail experiences, you can increase conversion rate and average order value. So you see the stats here, conversion rate in average order value, customer satisfaction. And by the way, retention definitely goes up from live chat conversations as well. So if you're not doing this properly, if you're not doing real time live chat conversations with your customers, how much money are you leaving on the table? Let's say you're doing a million dollars a year. That's not even that's not that much. Right. But it's good. This is good e-commerce business, healthy, growing. Uh, you want more from your Facebook advertising. You want more from your merchandising and you definitely want more from your conversion rate. You're thinking, what can I do next? The cost of not executing on live chat. It's 13% of your total revenue. So it's $130,000 more in your pocket if you do live chat on your site. For a million dollar brand, probably cost you less than one full-time job. So less than $40,000 to uh, to do full real-time live chat. Um, it should actually, I would say, um, it can be well under that into like 10 to 15,000 in order to get this 13,000 boost. So all you're, I'm t I am talking about an investment because you do need a person manning it and you probably can't do it yourself because you can't be answering every customer question um, and you are going to have to sleep at some point and you're going to miss somebody um, and you don't, but a uh, fun or going darting around, which is my favorite thing to do. If you can't tell already, uh, you, um, you definitely, uh, you, you definitely want to, you can, when you can man chat on your on hours, your high peak hours, and then you can actually turn off the live chat uh, during off peak hours. Now, of course, this isn't gonna get you the full 13% gross revenue because you're not capturing every person that wants to chat with you, but at least you're working your way towards uh, from your kind of your high value perspective customers to your lower value. And in fact, to dwell on that a little bit more, I think I even have a slide on in a second, but since I'm talking about it, um, you can start by only showing live chat to people who have added products to cart, who are on the Carter checkout page, right? Who, who are on the product detail page, who have been on the site for more than five minutes, who have browsed three or more products, right? So you can choose when to activate the chat situation so that you're only talking to high value prospects as opposed to browsers or uh, random people that have essentially entered your site or dear sir, madams that are, that are, you're going to get spam when you, uh, execute on live chat. There'll be people that like you're not going to, uh, you're, that are just going to waste your time and literally type garbage into the chat. That's okay. That's still, that's just a percentage of, of the trash that we, we don't worry about. And the, the percentage of good inquiries is of course all we care about. All right. So it all works because of this one fundamental uh, component, right? This is how we make our money. When you ask a brand a question, when do you want an answer? We all know the answer is now, right? So average response time for live chat is 90 seconds if you're doing it right. Emails, 13 hours. Contact us, Forbes are 16 hours. This is half a day later. So you're definitely not on the site. With chat, you're on the site. We're keeping them on the site. And by the way, being on the site has a lot of additional value uh, just for staying there. And then ironically, all of those chats that just went straight to email, we actually found, and this is again, a, a, across 500 brands surveyed, that chat to email was a longer response time than email. Think about that for a second. It's supposed to be a 90 second uh, response time in conversation. And what are we getting? We're getting 20 hours later, we're getting a message. It's actually better not to have chat to email at all. And we have proven that with, uh, with studies especially around brands that were doing the, the whole uh, chat component raw. So the faster the response time, the higher the conversion rate. If you can respond in under 10 seconds, if you can respond immediately, uh, sometimes immediately is totally impractical, um, you're, you're, you're going to make more money. And there's an actual, um, this is a sales principle that's existed for a long time. In the B2B space, there is this, you know, people fill out a form with their phone number. And if you can call them within five minutes, you can close a sale. That works really well in B2B. In larger average order value B2C, that could even also be a thing you do, which is kind of this inbound outbound sales is what we would call it, uh, phone sales. But it's not required. We can just simply do the chat responses there. Um, and, and, and that will be, uh, great. So think about how you get that number <clears throat> down under 90 seconds, under 60 seconds, under 30 seconds, and it'll increase your conversion rate. 
And then we see up to 45%, that's almost half of, almost half of your live chats are going to generate a new customer. So if you're telling me, you know, this is going to impact my margins, I can't do this in my business. If you can imagine that one out of every two or one out of every three people you talk to is going to become a new customer, you can see how valuable those chat conversations are. Even if they were there is a small amount of cannibalization, meaning they were going to buy anyways, but they wanted to talk to you. But just by having that very basic conversation and proving that you're there behind the website uh, is going to make them become more of an advocate for you. They will remember the chat conversation. And when they open the box, they'll be like, oh, I need to tell Laura from the company that it uh, it came damaged, right? They, they're going to already be thinking about the customer service rep. And so instead of saying it came damaged, this brand sucks, they're going to be like, oh, I've got my personal rep to kind of, you know, help me through this re exchange return process. And that, of course, is going to lower our return and, uh, and, and failure rate. Did I just skip a slide? Let me go backwards. Here, guys, sorry, uh, back. I cannot go backwards, so I need to exit out of this really quick. I didn't know I couldn't go backwards. Can you still see my screen? Give me one second, move back into presenter view. All right, we should be good. All right, now I know that we can't go backwards uh, <laughs> on this PC. Uh, so. Here's the, here's the stats on where live chat is today. This is uh, incredibly scary and presents what I would call the biggest, one of the biggest opportunities for any fast growing brand. Again, with about average order value $40 and the higher the average order value, the stronger this will be for you. Uh, and, and for any brand that, that's got just, uh, if you've got one customer service agent, three customer service agents, really just any kind of starting customer service uh, team is enough to implement this strategy. So um, with zero, it's a little bit tougher. But again, I, I, I said you can you can start um, slowly, essentially. So out of 500 brands surveyed, we had 320 chat conversations. It's about 60, 65 percent of all of these top e-commerce brands have chat enabled on their site. Go brands. So you're probably thinking, you know, OK, so 65 percent of people are already doing this. This isn't news, Derek. Well, we found that 261 of them go straight to email. We already proved that that decreases conversion rate and is bad for business. So 59 of them did not simply go to email. 23 of them started with a bot interaction, which is significantly uh, better for the brand. And, and it can be better for the consumer because um, it's, it's impractical to think that a human has to answer every single question. And sometimes the questions are really basic and can just be uh, very much Q&A almost, I don't want to say transactional, but you've got the exact answer they need and it's in a macro response template. And so there's really no reason for a human to engage at that exact moment to get that going. And that's why bot interactions are so important. And then of those 59 interactions, we actually saw that only 36 of them had a live agent on the line. So some of them had a bot with no person behind them. And then uh, some of them didn't have a human, but didn't respond until five, uh, five, five minutes or 90 to seconds to five minutes. So you can imagine um, that this is about 36 out of 500 brands doing it right, which means that as you saw the slide by accident, 93% of brands are still doing this wrong today. This is 2021. We've been talking about live chat since what, 2014. And there are many great solutions out there for, for solving live chat. So you know that it can be done, but still we see most brands are doing it wrong. This is why I think it's a huge opportunity for you. And of course, I've said it already, the goal that you want is that 24 seven because your website's always on, right? Your customer isn't sleeping, people are buying internationally, you're, you're doing, if you're doing any sales at night, you need some somebody manning the chat at night. Uh, of course, I, I want to emphasize this is the goal. You don't have to start here, but this is where you're heading. From now on, from this day forward, if you don't have 24-7 bot to human on-site chat with less than 90 second response time, then you're saying to the rest of your team, we're working towards this on this timeline because I know this will be good for the business. And uh, and I know that we don't want to go, you know, the timeline represents, you know, moments of scale, 1 million, 3 million, 5 million, 10 million, certainly by 10 million uh, in revenue revenue per year on a, on a direct to consumer channel, this should be well within your the affordability and the resource capability to execute on. There's no excuse past there, even though 93% of the major brands are, uh, you know, doing it wrong. 
What I love uh, from the team at Gorgeous, and this is an old dashboard, they've actually updated this significantly. I should ask them for a new slide. Um, but they separate the tickets into those pre-sale tickets, post-sale tickets, tell you who converted after the conversation, and then they show you the conversion rate, sales, and they even give you sales by agent so that you can see Sam is crushing it. Maybe we should even give bonuses or incentives to our uh, support agents. And I'll tell you what, Share is only converting at 7%. I bet we could do some sales training with her, walk her through the products, get her to understand uh, how to sell to customers better. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on that in just a second. Here's one. All right. So this is a great example for us to start with. Uh, and we did this during our mystery shopper survey of, of 500 brands. So this is a real conversation that we had uh, and with kind of real dummy conversation, whatever that means. But we were talking to the brand for real. This happened. So hello, are the product currently in stock? I think it was glasses. I don't, I don't remember exactly. Hi there. Thanks for reaching out to store. I'm happy to help here. So Julie responded without addressing the question in play which is probably a pre uh pre uh, an auto response essentially it's not ideal and it doesn't get the conversation moving cassie's waiting she says hello thank you for your interest oh lash lashes that's right which lashes were you interested in julia asks well she already mentioned the product so why do we have to mention it again i don't understand the product so she's just literally saying the same thing that she said before this makes no sense. Like we're already off to a bad start, right? You can see how Julia should have had the information on hand that she needed. Cassie shouldn't have had to repeat herself. We're three chats in and we haven't gotten anywhere. Not a huge mistake, but enough that I want to call it out. Julia says, unfortunately, it does not look like we have these available at this time. I apologize. This, um, th this is not good for multiple different reasons. You shouldn't be apologizing for things that are like going to happen in your business. You didn't like, I don't know, uh, run their dog over with your car. Like you didn't actually do something terribly wrong. Um, but the worst thing about this statement is that it ends, it's, it's like ends the conversation <laughs> essentially. Cassie goes, okay, Julia, may I answer any additional questions for you? Well, what do you think I'm here for Julia? Okay. Cassie is like, Ca Cassie is like, I'm trying to buy lashes on your site. Like lashes are fairly interchangeable. If, if I see one lash with one specific design, I'll still buy another lash with another design. But uh, Kat, uh, Julia isn't seeing this opportunity to move Cassie over to another product to suggest things for her. Instead, Julia is just trying to end the conversation because she gets paid on how many tickets she can close and how fast she can close tickets. And her boss is going to be so happy that she closed out this ticket, resulting in no sales. So this is customer service gone awry, right? This is This is not good for us. This is going to affect our conversion rate negatively. And this is why we do have to pay attention to how we have conversations with people, not just how many and not not just, uh, you know, not just the basics of, of, of answering questions and macro responses. So Cassie says, no, thank you. Julia says, thank you for reaching out. If we can assist at any time, please let me know. Have a great weekend. Like a kind of a canned response, which is okay. But unfortunately, Julia's literally saying, please leave my store. I don't want you to buy any of these products. Put your wallet away. <laughs> this is an absolute fail of a chat conversation. Don't have chats like this. Okay. <laughs> Next up. Uh, oh, yeah. By the way, uh, in quick interlude, another fail that can happen in chat is if you're chatting with somebody and they give you a coupon code, they're gonna use boom five. I was not happy I was in, uh, with with the, the chat experience. So I went to leave, I, I went to exit with my mouse, right? I moved my mouse up and I got this 10% off your order pop-up. So there's two things that are gonna go wrong here. First, I feel like Emily was totally lying to me, right? Because she gave me 5%, but the store is willing to give me 10%. The second thing is, is that if they're tracking the use of the Boom5 coupon code, if they see anybody use this code, it's bad because they just like, the, the customer, they left that customer with what could be a bad taste in their mouth because the 10% off is so prevalent across the site. But also if they're trying to track revenue, like, hey, how much revenue did Emily contribute to sales this month or how, our customer service team? Let's check how many people use the Boom 5. Oh, why didn't anybody use the Boom 5? Our customer service team must suck. No, it's because you have other sales and offers on your site that way are, are way like specifically and exactly better and the 5% off discount. So make sure your offers and coupons and discounts and promos and sales are all aligned through your customer service department. If you have a larger team, you have one person in marketing, liaise with one person in customer service, usually director, director, and they talk every week about upcoming campaigns and stuff, maybe every month if you need it to be that. 
uh, infrequent. And in that way, you've got alignment between the two so that this uh, embarrassment of a situation on, uh, I, I went on, um, st yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to throw them under the bus. I went on stage a little bit after Ezra Firestone and showed the, the everybody like, Hey, Ezra is doing it wrong after, you know, um, because there is real, um, value there. So we know that the conversation itself is king. Let's look at another example. This is the glasses example. Cassie says, do these uh, glasses frames come in black? Sarah responds in less than 90 seconds. Hi, Cassie, please hold on a second and let me take a look. The great thing about this response is that it acknowledges that a real person is working on your case. You can bet between response one and response two, Cassie is not leaving the chat, right? Cassie's gonna stay around and wait for Sarah. And this is totally appropriate because Sarah does have to do some research in order to get the answer. Sarah says, both colors for this product are in stock, only these two at the moment. And she's saying basically not black, which she probably should have been a little bit more forward about, but that's okay. Okay, says, so only the blue and red, thank you. Sarah says, red and brown, correcting her, but not saying, no, you're wrong, red and brown. She's just naturally and gently correcting her, which is perfect. And Sarah notices the type and style of this brand. She says, but we have other cat eye shaped frames in black, let me share them with you. So now Sarah's showing her two products over here and one product over there. Do you, and then what happens, which naturally happens in chat, is that Cassie uh, goes silent. Maybe she's looking at the product or she could be uh, about to get lost you know, in the conversation. Um, and so Sarah goes, do you like this one? It's our best seller cat eye shape frame. So what's Sarah doing? Social proof, finding a top performing product and making sure that she re-engages Cassie after a long period of silence in order to get the sale. So Sarah's clearly well-trained in on-site chat sales, which is really, it's actually quite impressive. Cassie goes, yes, that may work. Thank you for your help. Sarah, you're welcome. She spells welcome wrong. We don't care. That's totally fine. Whatever, like be human, right? And we have other black cat-eyed frames as well, but this one is the best seller. You can use our filter to find them all, explaining how you might be able to use the site because it's not always intuitive for things like filters and search bars and so forth and so on. Cassie says, great. Sarah says, hope you enjoy shopping with us. Unlike Julia's experience where she said, thank you, goodbye, have a great weekend, like go out and have fun in the sun, don't stay on my website. Sarah says, hope you enjoy shopping with us. She's implying that Cassie's gonna buy which is, and, and that Cassie should stick around for as long as she wants. Perfect, this is a huge win. This is how we sell uh, using live chat. This is where we're gonna make all our money. Really quick, some words that we use matter here. Hesitate, uh, we don't need to use that, sorry. We should be really reluctant to use the word sorry unless it's a big thing. Find implies something's lost. Please is great. Pleases and thank yous are absolutely still working. Online is a very common word used in live chat situations because it's an auto response saying that you're not online, which implies that your store is turned off or your live chat is turned off while your store is still on, I should say. And that's obviously bad because if you can buy a product, you should have somebody on there backing it up. So using the right words is, uh, is really going to be important for you. Some sub goals here that make live chat even more valuable. You can get data on people. You can quiz them. You can, are you male, female? Is this for you or for a friend? Like you can get a whole bunch of information on them prior to the sale. You can catalog that in your CRM, even if they don't buy and use personalization and segmentation to follow up with them. You wanna engage with them. The more chats back and forth you get, the more revenue or the more likely they're gonna convert and the more revenue you're gonna get. You can use it for customer development research. Oh, you didn't find a uh, piano key necktie? Well, maybe we should start selling piano key neckties. Yes, that's a throwback to Zoolander. Uh, <laughs> you can turn your common questions into content and macro responses. So if they're asking the same thing about sizing, you can create a sizing guide. If they're asking, does this product uh, have a USB 3 plug, you, and you can show the USB 3 plug in an image, right? You can you can figure out how common inquiries are, should turn into on-site content, blog content, uh, FAQ content, and macro responses. <clears throat> One more second here. Biggest challenge you're going to face as you look to implement this is your sub 90 second response time. Second biggest challenge is often turning a customer service rep into a sales rep. That can be more challenging than you think. And then you really need to focus on tracking, reporting, and incentivizing these agents. And finally, it, there is 
a this there's a cost associated with this and i know i said how much is your roi from your customer service department there is a cost line item associated with this but the revenue should far out exceed the cost thus boosting overall profitability you just need to check that that's working for you within your margins and you need to make sure you're doing this the best way and most efficient way possible and those are some of the kind of challenges and risks that occur here <clears throat> here's the six step strategy um all right um I'll just read it to you really quick, but you can also get the deck later. Build an FAQ, create the chat bot, uh, sales training guide so that the next agent you bring in is going to know exactly what words to use, how to sell, and what your products are. More, uh, They need to know the products really well. Sometimes sending them the products is, is also very important so they can uh, feel with it, play with it, get the experience. Um, you can use the, the you can follow this customer around the site and use that behavior to indicate um, to, to help understand what your let's say first initiated chat should be. So let's say you see a browser who's got two hundred dollars in their cart but has gone cold for uh, two minutes on the site. You can actually say, "Hey, it looks like you're stuck um, between these two items. Can I help you with anything?" You can engage in that chat with a random kind of pop-up conversation for them that's made just for them. And that makes people feel really um, respected. And of course, it's going to uh, increase conversion rate when you get the right message out there to people. Humans need to be ready to respond. There you go. We're ready. Profit. Some other takeaways here. Um, most stores are staffing their live chat in the wrong hours. They're doing nine to five. And most online sales, at least in the United States, this is all, all this data is actually from the US. I should have prefaced that since we're uh, at e-commerce day Greece. But <clears throat> uh, peak sales times are often from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. So they're a little later in the day. So you're staffing at the wrong hours. Um, yeah, yeah, I kind of covered all this stuff. If you want the this, we'll be able to give you the deck later. I already said the goal, just one more time, 24 seven bot the human onsite chat with less than 90 second response time. That is it for me. If you want to talk about live chat and other tools that you can use to grow your store, go to ecomtech.link forward slash consult, fill out a quick form, and then I'll contact you. We'll, we'll get in touch. You can email me at Derek at ecommercetech.io. If you want a bunch of videos and other content um, on on all sorts of stuff, ranging from social media for e-commerce all the way to my review of over a hundred uh, tech products, you can go to our YouTube link here and subscribe. Thank you guys so much. Derek, thank you very much for that. Yeah, I, I got it all out. <laughs> Yeah, I have to say you touched upon a lot of my pain points uh, in terms of online experience with uh, live chats, you know, response time, uh, person doesn't know what they're talking about, you know, they just want to close the ticket. So you made a really good point about, you know, having people behind the live chat uh, being, you know, sales trained. So what do you think? Uh, in your experience, you know, an organization to, should balance out between customer support and how much is actually uh, sales support. Yeah, I, I mean, I think each company's individual demand will tell what that is for. And it does change based on retention uh, components as well as, uh, you know, a company that has a really bad shipping process where the, do the products are coming damaged a lot. They're going to need more customer service support. At the end of the day, what I'd love to see is organizations completely separating out the two so that one and the other aren't codependent because it is important that we answer every live sale, uh, live chat inquiry that we can get and focus on that pre-sales. Remember, if we can do more sales, that'll increase conversion rate, which gives us more customers, which means we do need more customer support. But at the end of the day, that customer support is totally validated because revenue has gone up and we have more money in the bank to support the entire system. So it is really just a factor of investment, return on investment, and then honestly executing in the way that I just described here, as opposed to the way that we we kind of can see the bad way in which to execute on this. And if you execute on it the right way, you will absolutely see the revenue result from it. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing, you know, my, maybe you've already given the answer. If you were to choose between a bot or a live chat person, uh, you'd go for the live chat person, right? Yeah, it shouldn't have to be a choice because any good live chat software will have some form of bot or, or um, you know, some, something that can kind of uh, mitigate tickets is what we're really looking to do here uh, so that not every single little 
blurb or inquiry, you know, price in stock, like, like little things like that. Yes, this like you can have, you know, quick bot responses set up there. If you are doing bot only, you're running the, the serious risk that people are going to dead end themselves from this, this bot interaction. And then they're going to kind of be upset. They're not really, they're not going to get the full value that your brand has to offer. And then again, on the flip side, if you're doing live chat only with real people, you're kind of spending more than you need to on answering every single ticket. Okay. And you mentioned, you mentioned the pop-up. Uh, I mean, I might not be, you know, a good case study because I might find it too aggressive. I always switch them off if they, if they you know, just pop up like that. I find them a bit intrusive. Do you have any sort of research that might support, you know, uh, a good pop-up with a bit of uh, behavioral data behind it? or Yeah, the, the, well, the first thing is because I know I showed the example with a, a full page takeover pop-up. And, um, and really my point there is just making sure that your discount and your pop-ups is always aligned with any other discount you're going to give across live chat or on the site. When it comes to that live chat bubble pop-up, you want it to be as specific to the user or behavior as possible. So uh the common like starting one is like can i help you with anything very generic not going to get a lot of inquiries unless they have a really burning problem and are already kind of thinking yes i do want to buy this uh that's kind of nice because you will get um a lot of high vo value inquiries but you're missing the long tail of people who um are just confused like the people who are like I don't think I, I I need this. Oh, this isn't gonna work for me. Like those people are starting to leave the site. And if the pop-up can say, you know, this can in fact work for people over the age of 50 or something like that. Like, oh, I'm over 50. Let me let me see what they're talking about. Oh, t okay, tell me more about how it works for people over 50. So like the there's a there there is a clear like moment for engaging. And the more we know about each individual browser, the more we can personalize to that the better the inquiry will be. We see this working really well in enterprise sales and B2B. Um, just to go kind of give you the, in, in the full picture, you're actually able to enrich. Some people are browsing from their uh, from their business IP address, and then you can enrich and say, oh, it's this company is browsing. And then we can say, oh, we help brands like, you know, Google, Facebook, whatever, because I've compared you to uh, other tools or other people in the industry. And you can even say, are you from this company? And it kind of freaks people out. And, and this is only for enterprise sales, but like you can see how that kind of personalization can really engage with people. Uh, the way that I described it isn't necessarily the best way to execute on it, but there are uh, other around around about ways that, that can be really valuable that way. But for the most part in e-commerce specifically, it's gonna be about browsing experience. It's great to know if they're a repeat uh, customer, you should almost VIP those people. So if they bought from you before and they're back on the site, you should be, um, first of all, you could all, uh, you could imply if the, if the order is still out, like the order hasn't been uh, closed all the way down, that they're looking for order information. So you could just say, "Hey, I see that you're, you know, you're, you're John from Missouri. Like, did you, are you looking to for information about your order?" And then if you see that the order is closed, you could say, "Oh, what else do you need from us? This is your last order here. Maybe you need the accessory, the supporting item, the 2.0 version, right? Oh, you bought a shirt. How about some pants, right?" So there's there's a lot of different ways to engage with repeat customers that can increase the uh, second purchase average order value and give them a real personalized experience. Okay, so yeah, so um, what I take from that is that you actually need the information to make you know the pop up or the extra reaching out uh, more effective. So you need to be able to track some behavior or have some info about the person that you actually you know have in front of you on screen or uh, the eyeballs. So one final question, sort of to wrap it up, um, I'd be very curious to see. Do you see the telephone coming into it? I mean, at what point, you know, it's it's always, you know, if uh, you're a Generation Z kind of person, you're probably texting away and you don't want, you know, anything personal to talk to anybody. But do you find chances where, you know, switching to telephone could be faster or easier uh, for stuff? Yeah, two two real big innovations in this space. The first is the phone, and the second is video calls and chat are both coming into play. So video beauty consults, uh, and then there's a third one for fashion, which is there's there are tools that you can take a, a picture of your body, and it will automatically size you, and then it'll only show products that are in your size. And that that that's some really incredible technology. So on the phone side, really cool app for Shopify store owners called Shop Phone is uh, enables you to capture somebody's phone number and then immediately call them. Or follow up with them a little bit later. 
Uh, this would be for higher average order value, $150 or more. And as you hinted, Gen Zers less less apt to, to being good here. Uh, older like baby boomer generation gonna respond really well to this. And then, e and then even though it's true that there's that cliche there between those two generations, you can still do some phone sales with someone of any age and expect to increase conversion rate. Again, the faster you send that phone call out after they fill out the form and talk them through the process, the more likely you are to increase sales. And then on the video chat and stuff like that, really innovative things that I'm seeing in beauty is they, they instead of having customer service agents, they actually have makeup artists on call. Um, and here's another one in the, in the wig space, they have, they have wig specialists on call. And if they type in that they'd like to do a video consult, the person just jumps in. And oftentimes there are people uh, sitting inside like a Sally's Beauty in the middle of you know nowhere. There's nobody in the store. They can actually answer the phone from the store. They can even walk around the store, pick out the items, hold them in their hand, and then say, okay, now you buy those online. Or come into my shop because you're 10 miles away and I'll, I'll wrap them up and sell them for, to you here. So a lot of cool things that we can do when we combine all these things together. Cool. Well, uh, Derek, thank you very much. I love the uh, Zoolander throwback. Yeah. In there. <laughs> I took note. So once again, thank you very much for being with us. And I hope you enjoyed your time. And great having you. Thank you. It looks like Tim Ash is next. He's, he's uh, amazing. Don't miss it. You guys are going to be in for a treat here. Thanks.